Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, what I'm going to do is go through a very quick run through of a post production workflow of a raw image. So, if you're a new photographer intimidated by raw image editing, hopefully, this video will help satisfy or put you at ease. So, the first thing that you're going to do whenever you edit a raw photo is choose your camera profile. Now, over here in the develop setting, as you can see, I'm looking at the image of my daughter here. And uh, what I would like to do whenever I have a portrait image, I always go to on one portrait. This seems to open up a lot of the character or the space around the image makes it a little bit brighter, especially since I shot this image a little underexposed. And I think this would be representative of most beginner photographer uh, photos that you start to edit. So we'll go with on one portrait. Now that I have that set, the next thing is making sure my white balance is good. The white balance in your image is really just telling on one what colors actually look like and what they should base their uh, neutral point off of. And then colors are developed around that. So. In order to set your white balance, if that sounds intimidating, all you have to do is click this little eyedropper tool next to color and then come over and find something that should be white. Click it one time and it changes your white balance. Now, this was a warm, sunny day, so I'm starting to get some of that sun that was coming in the color from that, that that's starting to come in. But it's a little too much for me. So what you want to do is change the temperature. Now, obviously, if I pull it to the right, it's going to warm up the image and it's going to add more of that orange yellow tint. Uh, but if I pull it to the left, as you can see, I start to remove that and I introduce blue into the image. Well, I don't want it to look like they're in a swimming pool. I want it to be somewhat warm. But at the same time, I want to leave this alone. Now, one thing that I will mention with the white balance is if you shot it well in camera, then you can leave that alone and skip this step all in, all together. With that being said, I did like the way that this came out of camera. I like the sort of blue look here. So I'm going to leave that alone. The next thing that you would want to do is make sure you have a good base palette of color to work off of to do that. You can mess around with your saturation and vibrance. Now, saturation is going to heavy hand and make your photos look very cartoony. And if that's what you're going for, or if you really need some saturation, then go for that. But most of the time, I find that uh, I don't move this more than five. It five value. I don't know more than five points to the right uh, in most cases. But usually I am moving this to the left to get more of that muted look in the colors because in order to bring more oomph and punch to my colors, what I think uh, works better is vibrance. This is almost more of a natural enhancement of the colors that exist in the photo. So uh, I usually pull this up fairly high, but again, you can get it too high and you get that cartoony look again. Um, and the way that I like to manage my vibrant slider is by pulling up on it to a point where I'm like, yeah, that looks good. And then I come back to my saturation and I either pull it down to see if I want to go for a more exaggerated muted look or pull it up and keep it more neutral. This is one of the stylistic things that you can choose, especially if you know you don't want to edit color later on in the image or you have no plan to edit color um, or you're working on a ton of images and you don't have time to modify color in each one. These are two great sliders that you can use to make those edits quick and fast. Next thing that you want to do is check your dynamic contrast. Now, I'm not going to go deep into what dynamic contrast is, but essentially you want information to the far left of your histogram and to the far right 
So that way you're making sure you're using up all of the pixel value and content that's available. In order to check that, what you can do is pull on your black and white uh, sliders. As I pull my black slider to the right, you can see I'm pulling information away from the left side of my histogram. And as I pull it back to the left, you can see I'm pulling information to the left of the histogram. Now, good rule of thumb is you don't want a whole lot of information in the blacks unless that's your style. And then you can do that. And you also don't want a whole lot of information in the whites. You just want to be touching that when you create your base image. Now, as you start to modify and go deeper into more of the stylistic portion, then sure. But right now, what we're doing is setting the primer so that way it's a little bit easier to modify uh, and add a style to later. So what I'm doing with the whites is just pulling those away uh, because you can see I blew out the background here or at least some segments of the background. Now to check that I can hold down the J key and if you see red clipping indicators that means you blew out the background so you have no information in those areas. Uh, not a huge problem especially if you didn't have anything in the background that was worth seeing, like everything that's back there, not really worth seeing because I want the focus here. Now, the next thing that you can do uh, if you want it to recover that background is pull down on the exposure until you start to see that go away. Now, once they're all gone, Eureka, it's great, right? Now you got the background in, in, in the photo, but it's really dark in the foreground. Well, we'll just pull up on the shadows. All right. By pulling up on the shadows, it's a more targeted adjustment in just this area. So now I have a pretty good base exposure. I can modify this even further by moving contrast highlights and all that other good stuff. Uh, but for this image, it doesn't need it. For your image, you may need to do it. You may need to modify highlights if you need to pull down on those really bright areas that aren't quite white in your image to get a better balance. You may need to adjust midtones so that way uh, the neutral colors or the neutral uh, brightness areas in your image are exposed properly. So this is a good way of adding in what we call fill light or at least used to call it fill light uh, i don't know but there is the good base edit so if you have any questions uh, leave them in the comment section below and i will do my best to answer those if you found value in the video go ahead and smash the like button if you want to see more about photo editing and just in general, like what do you do from this point on? Because there's a lot of stuff that you could do from this point. Uh, but essentially we went from this to this in a fairly short amount of time. And if I weren't explaining it, I probably would have been done a lot faster. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.